What's up, friends? You ready to rumble? <laughs> okay, sorry. What's up, guys? Are y'all ready to paint? Because I'm ready to paint. And y'all have been requesting this video for an extremely long time. So let's jump just straight right into it. I'm Sunshine Jackson, owner of Arctic Sun. And today, we are about to paint our galaxy hair, girl. <laughs> Exhibit one. Exhibit two. Exhibit three. Yes, I have painted her multiple times. Oh, also, exhibit four. Exhibit five. <laughs> Those are my personal pieces that I painted way before, you know, Arctic Sun paint and soaps were a thing. But anyways, for supplies, of course, I'll be using my personal Arctic Sun kit, you feel me? Why wouldn't you be using one? The kit includes a pre-drawn canvas, so you don't have to worry about any drawing. All the supplies you'll need, including paint in these cute little paint cups, two brushes, a small brush, and a medium-sized brush, a reference photo, and your own YouTube tutorial. <laughs> I'm Sunshine Jackson. Nice to meet you. And a cool thing is that the pre-drawn canvas is done in pencil, so any changes that you want to make to it, if you want to change her hair up or whatever the case may be, you can easily do that by just erasing the outline of her hair and drawing it however you want. However, you won't even need to do that because these paintings, as you see, I held up like three different hair designs. So when you check out on artxsun.com, that's where you get your panties up kits from artxsun.com. Write that down you choose which hairstyle that you want so you can pick an afro you can do a short bob straight hair you can do long straight hair you can do locks uh, this is the lock was like a fan favorite so you can pick your own hairstyle so that you don't have to worry so much about redrawing it or erasing it or anything like that also the paint in the kit comes with all the colors that you'll need to make any skin tone so from fair skin light skin to darker skin whatever you want to do it contains all the paint that you'll need to mix it up and make her you know reflect however you want her to look because that's the goal you paint your girl how you want her to be okay anyways so the only supplies that you'll need that are not included in the arctic sun kit is a paint palette or some kind of plate to mix your paint on put your paint on some paper towels uh, to clean up your mess and also there's a specific part of this painting that paper towels or a piece of paper is required so paper towel piece of paper something like that but a paper towel is great for cleaning up your messes because you know sometimes painting gets messy because it's supposed to um and a cup of water because the postman said i can't mail water to y'all um so what can you do and then whatever you know you may so choose to sip on that's your business that's your business but it's a pain and sip so if you want to get your sip on you know whatever mm. <laughs> okay anyways now let's actually fully for real, for real let's get started remember if at any point you need to slow down the video just pause it and catch up and i'ma still be here when you get back so phase one is painting your base coat or your first layer let's start with yellow in acrylic painting painting your first layer or your base coat is always going to be your first step. That's because an acrylic painting is done in layers and you have to get started somewhere. We're getting started with yellow because in our painting, the background, um, the yellow background is what is farthest away in the picture. It's always best to work from the background to the foreground when you're working in acrylic paint or really any medium is always best to work from the background to the foreground. So that's an Arctic Sun tip for you. I'm using my medium sized brush because it is a larger area. Most of this painting will probably do be done. Most of this painting will probably be done with my medium sized brush because most this painting has a lot of large areas in it. So I'm just going around the outline of her hair and painting this background. Another Arctic Sun tip is to make sure you paint the edges of your canvas because you want it to be ready to hang when you're finished and it sucks having to go back and paint your edges, you know, when you're done with your piece. The best way to paint your edges is to allow it to continue across the edge so that it looks seamless and when you look at it from any angle, um, you see that the picture looks like continuous. Thank you. 
and on your kit your line will be drawn for you so you'll know how far to paint your edges. So with acrylic paint you want your layer to be thick enough so that it looks opaque um, so that it's not see-through or transparent but you don't want it to be too thick to the point where it just takes forever to dry. Uh -oh. And if you messed up like I just did or not even a mess up but if you get some paint on inside of your outline it's 100% completely fine because you'll be painting over that anyways. So I am finishing up this yellow getting it straight from my little bitty -de -de, cute little cup and putting it right on the background. This paint is looking pretty thick. This layer is looking um, pretty thick because, you know, I got high quality paint in my paint and sip kits, you feel me? Um, so I actually think that one layer is going to work. But if you are painting and you see that your base coat is kind of struggling or looking a little see-through or anything like that, just let it dry and then add a second coat to it. Add a second coat to it. You know, like if you go outside and it's cold and you got a coat on, but you don't understand why you're still cold, and then you go back in the house and you get a second coat, same thing. Good job. Give you a shot of the edges. Same here. Doop. All this entire side is yellow. This here. Okay, perfect. And I still got yellow in my little paint cup, so if you need to add another layer, you still got paint to do it. So this layer looks really good and really uh, nice and thick, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more yellow to some spots that look a little thinner. But for the most part, this base coat layer is looking very good and if you have some paint at home and you want to do your background in a different color more power to you honey i am using exactly what's included in this kit which are um the colors that you will need to paint the picture that i showed you earlier pop 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 on the screen now we're done with the background. Next we'll paint the skin tone. So mix whatever skin tone you want to use for your girl. Um, I'll be using brown because I'm a brown skin girl. Um, so brown is included in the kit but the brown is a very dark brown and I want to make it a little lighter so all I'm going to do is add some white in there. If you want to make um, her skin even lighter lighter there's also a peachy color included and if you want to make your skin lighter, you add white. If you want to make her skin darker, you add black or brown. So I mix the brown included in the kit with the with the white included in the kit. And I got this brown color here. So I'm just going to apply this wherever her skin is. And make sure that you don't use all of whatever your color you're using for your base skin color because you need some left over for later. For some details we'll be doing later. I like to use a palette, so I'm kind of like scooping it out of my paint cups and then putting it, mixing it on my palette. And I'm just painting over her chin. I'm going to make that outline later for her chin, but if you're not sure about painting over it, if you're like, I don't know if I'm going to know where that, where that chin is later on, um, you can outline it with a pencil. Do not outline it in a Sharpie or a pen because it might be very hard to cover that up. Some I realize that Sharpie does not cover well with acrylic paint at all. Um, but if you want to just make sure that you can see that later, you can draw in that chin real hard with um, a pencil so that you can see it through your skin tone a little bit. Or you can just paint it in later. So now I'm painting my edge. And now I am continuing with painting her face. If your paint, if you find that your paint is really thick, you can dip your paintbrush in some water. My water's getting a little dingy, but you can dip your paintbrush in some water to thin it out and make it spread easier. I can show you an example of that. This kind of, you know, makes it thinner. 
So you don't want to put too much water or else your paint will get too thin and transparent. But if you're finding um, a hard time, if you're having a hard time making it spread easily across your canvas, you can dip your paintbrush in water and use it like that. So as you can tell with this base coat, I can still see through it a little bit. It's not fully opaque. So I will be um, letting this dry and then adding another layer to it. But remember with acrylic paint, it's super, super, super important to let your layers dry completely and fully before adding another layer on top of it. So let your paint dry before you add another layer on top of it. So I'm gonna stop messing with that and let it dry because if I keep on, you know, stroking it, mm, that's what. That's what he said. If I keep on stroking it and brushing it and manipulating it and messing with it, um, it will not dry quickly. It will take a much longer time to dry. So you just gotta like let it go. I know we wanna like always sometimes like keep working on things and keep working on things, but you gotta just like, with acrylic paint, you just gotta leave it alone and let it be, let it do its thing and then we'll come back to it. So now I'm just touching up that yellow spot that I messed up earlier. It will probably not be my last touch up and it certainly isn't my first touch up. And again, if you want to mix different skin tones, um, add white to your brown to make it lighter, add white to your peach color to make it lighter, add black to your brown to make it darker, or add um, black or brown to your peach to make it darker. Either of those colors would do because they're both darker than the peach. Next step is the hair. Since this is galaxy hair, it's not going to be like blonde, brunette, redhead, nothing like that. It's, you're going to paint your face coat black. Get your black paint out, open up that lid, pop that sucker open, murk, 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 and still using my medium sized brush, spread an even layer of acrylic paint onto that. If you're not using any of your other colors, make sure that you close the lid on it so that it um so that your paint doesn't dry out. And I'm going to just keep on painting around the curves with black. So I'm just going around the curves real nice like Her hair is the last base coat we're doing because it is closest to the foreground, closest to the viewer. Since the yellow is farthest away, then it's her skin and then her hair. As you can see, her hair is like on top of her face. So that is why we are doing the black last. Always best to work from the background to the foreground. In this case, technically on her neck, her hair is, I would imagine, behind her skin. Also, I did not mention this earlier. Make sure that you are thoroughly washing your brush out in your water cup when you switch colors. If your outline is not perfect, so as you can, I don't know, you might not even be able to tell, but there's a little bit of a, this is a pretty rough outline that I'm doing with her hair, and that is 100% fine because um, this is a galaxy hair and it is not made to be perfect you feel me so don't even stress about it if your outlines um, not perfect do not use all your black there will be enough in your kit um, to do this base coat and still have black left over as long as you're not crazy heavy-handed and like wasteful of the paint um, there will be enough left over so leave some black in your paint pot, your paint cup, paint container, whatever you want to call it, so that you have some later, because we will need a little bit of later. We won't need too much later, but just a little bit. And now I'm doing these edges again. If you spill acrylic paint on your clothes, during the making of this video, 
try to wash it out immediately like just put your paintbrush down and go wash it off because it is not going to come out very easily later on so that is another arctic sun tip for you wash that acrylic paint out as soon as possible so now i am taking my brush and cleaning out my water in a second i'm going to dump this water and get some new water because as you see it's looking a little bit dirty well I don't like that dirty water you feel me so we're gonna let this dry um, wait a couple minutes it won't take too long uh, but we need your layers to be completely dry before jumping into phase two phase two is layers so we just did the first layer, now we're about to do a couple more layers onto it. Remember, if at any time you need to catch up or slow down, just pause the video and I'll be here waiting for you. Just remember to come on back to me. One thing that's really important with acrylic paint is you have to make sure that your layer completely dries before starting the next one. So right now, make sure that your base coat layer is dry before you start phase two layers. So the kind of paint that's included in this kit is a very good thick paint. Your yellow layer should be opaque, it should not be see-through. If your yellow layer is see-through for whatever reason, maybe you applied it a pretty thin layer, that's fine. Just go ahead and do another coat of yellow onto these areas of the background. So since my yellow is opaque and not see-through, I'm going to actually start with her skin tone for my first step in phase two layers. So we're going to be doing highlights and shadows for the skin tone. So whatever your base coat was for the skin tone, you're going to add black to it to get a shadow or a darker color, and you're going to add white to it to get um, a highlight or a lighter color. So here's my brown. To make the brown darker, I can add black. And here's my peach. To make the peach darker, I can add black or brown because both of them are actually darker than the peach color. Uh, similarly, to make the brown lighter, I add white. Or I could add the peach because they're both lighter than this. So if I add either of these colors with this, I'll get a lighter color. And to get the peach lighter, I'll add white. So let's start with the shadows. Since this brown that I did for the base coat had a little bit of white in it already, I'm just gonna use the brown straight out of the tub for a darker brown because it will be darker than what I currently have down. I'm gonna paint this brown one swoop underneath her chin. One swoop along the side of her neck. And you see how this uh, base coat of brown wasn't completely opaque yet. It was a little bit see-through, but this layering phase is going to make it so that it doesn't have any more thin spots on it. I'm also going to add this darker color right here. So if you're using peach as your first skin tone color, you'll just be using a slightly darker peach here. So since it stands out a little bit too much, what I'm gonna do to blend it is clean off my brush in clean water. And I'm gonna take this brush that has no paint on it, just a little water on it, and I'm just going to blend it in. So right now my brush has nothing on it except for water. And I'm just taking the water and blending it in by going along the side of the paint that I just applied. Now I'm taking the same darker brown and I'm going on the side of her face, painting the side of her face, and a little bit along the edges of her hair. I'm leaving a little bit of space between her hair and this shadow, and I'm just applying it to the side of her face. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Again, cleaning off the brush in clean water, and blending it in with water alone. If you want to add a little cleavage you can do that too all right so now I want to do highlights so I'm taking my brown paint here and to make a highlight I'm mixing peach paint in there so I made a lighter color brown by mixing brown and peach and I'm just going to add that to her face as highlights so I added it here 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 and here. I'm also going to add a swoop below her neck. And again, cleaning off my brush so I have a clean brush. And I am 
blending in blending all of this in with clean water and you can't really mess this part up your highlights and shadows will look good no matter where you really place them If you feel like your shadow is too close to the color of the black and they kind of blend in together and don't stand out enough, you can just dip your brush in your highlight and just outline that area so it doesn't look like your shadow and the black of her hair is the same color. Make sure there's a defined space between her head and her chin because you don't want her to, you know, her head and her chin to just blend in together. And if you want to make the chin even more defined, you can take out a little bit of black, nothing crazy, but you can put a little bit of black there underneath that, um, underneath her chin just to make it a defined chin line. But don't make it too harsh because it'll stand out too much. Another blending technique is you could just really scroll it kind of. So now I'm completely done with her skin. It should be completely opaque. There should be no see-through spots. If you have any spots that are see-through, as in you can see the white canvas or any color of the canvas beneath it, you should just paint on top of it to get rid of any thin or see-through spots. So now it's time to get started on the hair. This is, this is the fun part. Okay, so we're gonna start with the dark blue first. Let's use the blue straight out of the container. So I just dip my medium sized brush into the blue. You don't want this part to be super, super heavy paint, as in there's nothing that you can see through it. Because if you take a look at this, you know, you can tell all the different colors are on top of each other. So you don't want to just do a super heavy coat of paint because it will mess up this look of the galaxy. So let me show you how to do that. So I dipped my paintbrush in the blue. Then I'm gonna dip this paintbrush with the blue paint on it into my water. So it just kind of watered it down a little bit. And I'm going to apply it. So now you see how this is a pretty thin and watery layer. I'm just going to apply some swirls, some random swirls, wherever you want them to go, onto the canvas. So I got some swirls of blue going on. Next I'm going to take this blue paint and put it on my palette so that I can mix it and then I'm going to clean off my brush and then I'm going to add some white paint to this to make a lighter color blue. Alright now that I got a lighter color blue same thing taking this paintbrush dipped in the blue paint dipping it in water and then adding some swirls of this color. If it looks a little bit too heavy, so right now these look a little heavy to me, they're a little bit too opaque, just take your paper towel and dab them off. See how this is looking so far? I'm going to do one more color of light blue before I take a break and let the background dry. So this is going to be a new light blue. Again, I'm going to take a scoop of white paint and add it into this blue. So now we should have an even lighter blue. So now I have an even lighter blue and I'm adding little swirls of this onto my canvas. Still watering my paint down. I'm adding swirls of this light blue onto my canvas. So now we're going to do something. We see, you see we have a lot of colors going on right now. In order to quicken the drying process of this layer, because we have to let it dry before we move on, I'm going to take this paper towel and I'm going to dab at it. So this is going to quicken the, the drying process and it's also going to give it a nice kind of galaxy look already. And we're not even finished yet, but you see how this is kind of blocked apart and this is already kind of mixing in nicely. Don't dab too hard to the point where you're just taking all your paint up 
but just dab at the whole background like this. Make sure that you're also getting the ends of the hair. So now we're going to let this dry before we continue. You can use this time while your hair is drying to touch up or work on the skin some more, to touch up any pieces of the background, anything you want to do like that. Or you could just, you know, wait a couple minutes and acrylic dries pretty quickly by itself. Also, you see I kind of got some of this blue onto the background. That is completely fine because we're kind of going to go for a messy look anyways with the background. We've only added three different shades of blue. The blue straight out of the cup, the blue out of the cup mixed with a little bit of white, and then that same color mixed with even more white. And then we dabbed at it with our paper towel. You can also use this time to make sure that your edges are painted. I'm gonna put some of that blue along the edges of my painting. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry and then I'll be back. So now this is dry, as you can see and feel. So once your layer is dry, you can continue. And guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna make yet another light blue. So my paint right here is still wet um, from my last light blue. So I'm just going to add some more white to this to make it even lighter. And we're gonna, guess what, continue with the same thing that we were doing before. So I have a very light blue right here that I mixed up. And I'm going to do the same thing of dipping it in water and then making swirls in random locations. But now that the first layer is dry, you know, we are putting it on top of the layer that we just created. And I'm watering it down with my water cup over here. If your water cup is really dirty, you can go ahead and get you some clean water. And now I'm actually going to take my purple. So there is a purple included in this kit. So I'm going to dip my medium sized brush right in the purple, dip it in the water and do the same thing. Now I'm going to once again take a paper towel like we did the last time and I'm going to dab it. I dabbed a little bit too much so I added some of the purple back in there. So now I'm just kind of smoothing it in a little bit. I'm not even adding paint right now, just a wet brush with no paint on it. I'm just kind of blending it in a bit. I'm gonna add a little bit more of one of my light blues in there. I don't even think this is my lightest blue, but I just kind of dipped it on my palette. have any spaces where you feel like there's not enough paint you can just go ahead and add it in so I know you're probably thinking girl this looks a mess this is not, this does not look like no galaxy but this is where things are about to get interesting you ready okay this is what we're gonna do so right now you can do your final dab of the hair to make sure that you know it's as dry as can be and you know the dabbing kind of does mix the colors in a little bit to give it that kind of a little bit of a galaxy look so this is when you need your paper towels take a piece of paper towel also a piece of paper works either one and we're going to rip it into small pieces and cover up the skin tone so i'm going to take this and it doesn't have to be perfect. Like you don't have to get out no pair of scissors and outline and trace and cut it out real perfect. You don't have to do nothing like that. So I'm just literally ripping up pieces of paper towel and placing it on her skin. Also, 
this next step can get a little bit messy. So if you want to protect your table, like your surface that you're painting on, you can like slide in a piece of paper, some newspaper, some more paper towels, something like that um, underneath your picture because this step might get a little bit messy. And phase three is details. So this is our final phase and it's everybody's favorite part. Let's do this. What we're going to do is some splatter. I'm gonna teach you how to do some splatter. And the splatter is what really brings in this entire galaxy. Cause I know you're probably looking like, girl, this picture does not look like a you know, galaxy. You lie, I want my money back now. <laughs> but like seriously, this step is what brings the whole thing together. So you can either use your medium sized brush or an old toothbrush if you have one laying around. Um, you don't need that, but if you do have one, old toothbrushes are great for splatter. But I'm gonna be using my medium sized brush. So I'm cleaning it off to get a clean brush. If your water is super dirty, this be a good. this would be a good time to clean it out. So I'm gonna dip my medium brush paint in white and then I'm going to put it on my palette and then I'm literally going to just add water to this on the palette. This is why you want to have some clean water right now because my paint just turned a little gray because my water's not clean even though I just told y'all to clean it and I didn't follow my own rules so I'll be right back. Be, be better than me. Just be better than me. Okay, now I've got some clean water. So I am going to get some white paint, put it here, add some clean water and just add it to my palette. So what I'm doing is watering this white down a lot. So you see how watered down this white is? All I did was add the white paint to my palette and then add water to the palette. And with this medium sized brush dipped in the watery white, I'm going to pull back the bristles like this and let go. And it splatters. And let go. And it splatters. And play around with it. The closer you get to it, the more concentrated the splatter is. The further away you are, the smaller that they are, but the more spread out they'll be. So play around with it. So I also like to dip it in my white, my watery white, and then literally just <laughs> sort of fling it at the canvas. So I'm about to just fling it and fling it, stand back a little bit and fling it, fling it from a different angle. And then you go back to the splatter like this and more splatter like that. And more splatter like this and I'm literally just dipping it into the watery white and just flicking it with my finger like beam, beam. Beam, beam, like that now you also see why we covered up the skin tone so that her skin tone isn't being covered in splatter. so you can also take this and just let it drip onto the canvas like so instead of doing like a big fling you can just kind of let it drip big drops onto the canvas so play around with it. There's a whole bunch of different ways that you can do splatter. It's always super fun. If you do a splatter you don't like, as always, you can kind of dab it up. Again, there's no right or no wrong way to do this. So I'm really excited to see what y'all put together. So after you've done all of the white splatter that you want to do, take your black paint, clean your brush off first, of course, um, then dip it into your black paint, put some of your black paint onto your palette. And also once again, of course, add water to it to water it down like we've been doing. You ain't new to this now. You know what, you know what it is. You're a professional at this point. I already know. All right. And what you're going to do is take this and instead of doing the black splatter across the entire surface, I'm only gonna concentrate it on the edges or around the edges of her hair. So instead of flinging it onto the entire surface of her hair, I'm only going to do little small little finger flicks along the edges, just like this. Just little small little finger flicks. So 
so I'm pretty close to my canvas at this point. I'm not doing it far away because I want it to stay in a pretty specific location. And no matter what hairstyle you have, this is um, the next step, just around the edges of whatever her hairstyle is. Make sure you got everything. Make sure you did everything you wanted to do. And now time for the grand reveal, okay? So carefully, because your canvas is probably wet from, you know, the black and white paint, but we're going to remove the paper towels that are on the skin. And this is our great reveal. Now it looks pretty galaxy, doesn't it? Also as part of the details layer, this is also when you can add earrings to the piece, like the earrings I gave to my lock queen right here. If you want, you can do some drips. So while your splatter is still wet, if you stand it up straight instead of laying it down flat, it'll drip down if it's watery enough. The best part about this picture is that there's no right way to do it. There's no wrong way to do it. There's no messing up. And every single time your piece will come out completely different. I never get tired of doing the Galaxy Hair Girl because it just is so much fun and so different every time. I never know what I'm gonna get. So even the, the reference photo of this compared to what I just created are two completely different paintings. So on this one, I did more flings with the white splatter. And this one doesn't have quite as much white splatter in general. It just, they're just different paintings and I really like them both. So to finish this piece off, go ahead and add any final details that you wanna add, any more splatter if you wanna do that, uh, any jewelry, accessories, a necklace, cleavage, earrings. If you want, you can draw an entire face on her. like. Go crazy, get creative, like do whatever it is that you want to do with your painting. And also, most importantly, and always most importantly, sign your name. You worked hard on this painting. I'm so proud of y'all. I already know that they look bomb. Make sure you sign your name somewhere on the canvas. Some people like myself like to sign it in a corner. I always go for a lower right corner is my go-to. Uh, but you can also sign it within the canvas. You can sign it in the galaxy. You can sign it on like her shoulder. You can get creative with it, whatever you want to do. Just make sure you put your name on that thing because you worked hard on it. So I will be signing mine. I'm not actually going to give her any um, accessories because I just really love her the way that she is. And this is also a time you can clean up anything if you want, if you see anything that needs to be cleaned up. And when this piece is dry, um, I don't want to pick it up and move it around now because like I said earlier, it's uh, wet right now so it will drip if I pick it up, put it to the side, move it around, that watery paint will drip down and I personally do not want that look for this piece right now. However, when it is dry, I am going to do some of that splatter onto my edges. Really just not the whole process of what we just did, but just that black splatter along the edges of her hair. I'm going to apply that to the edges. I don't know why I put it to the edges of my face, but I'm going to apply that to the edges of the canvas. Oh, child. Okay, so I'm about to take my small brush, my small size brush. And I am going to personally, I'm about to sign my name in this black, you know, a nice black and bold signature, you feel me? But sign your name or whatever you want to sign in. I'm about to sign mine in black paint in this lower right hand corner. You can also just sign your initials if you want. Whatever you want up to you. Isn't she lovely? Love the way that this came out. 
I really truly do. I love that it's also very different from my original. So the splatter specifically, the splatter specifically, try saying that six times fast. The splatter specifically is pretty different and I really like that because each piece has its own bit of like personality and creativity and you know I'm all about personality and creativity you feel me. So I love the way that this turned out. And obviously both of these two are different than these. So I just got a whole collection. I cannot wait to see your beautiful photos. So please, please, please take a picture of your art, post it on Instagram tagging at ArtXSun. You can also DM them to me at ArtXSun. You can email me your photos at info at ArtXSun.com. Whatever you do, just make sure that you're sending me your pictures because I cannot wait to see how they turn out. Also, this is my first collection of the Paint and Sip kit, so I appreciate any and all feedback that you have for me. What went well, what works, what can be improved, how did the entire painting and video process go for you? Leave feedback and also tell your friends, let your friends know that Artic Sun got some dope kits on the store and some dope video tutorials and post your paintings to show them exactly how dope it is. I want to make this the best experience I possibly can for you guys. So comment down below and tell me how your painting experience went. Tell me how your pictures turned out. Tell me how much you love them. And I can't wait to hear from you guys and get back to you. At the end of every month, I'm pulling a random winner from the review section on my website. So if you leave a review on the kits, you will win a prize, a brand new car. Don't let me lie to y'all. It ain't no card. It's not a card. But you will win a prize. So for real, for real, leave a review on artxsun.com because it helps me so much. It helps future customers see that um, I'm a real business. I'm trustworthy. I deliver what I'm supposed to do. You feel me? And also, you can win a prize. It's not going to be a card, but it'll be a prize, which is great. I feel like I'm rambling. But I'm just so, ex I'm so excited that I finally was able to launch these kits that I've been working on for so long. Make sure you follow me on at ArtXSun on Instagram. Sometimes I go live and do these paint and sip sessions live with y'all, free, completely free of charge. I just post the painting, post the supplies that y'all need to get, and I just go on Instagram live and we just be painting and vibing together. And it's a great, great, great time, great community of people. And just follow all my socials. Last fun fact is there is still plenty of paint left in these cups. By doing these videos of me painting it, you see that I'm actually painting it from the same containers that you guys are going to be using and I make sure that you guys have enough. If I can finish it with these little cups, then y'all can too. Because I care about you and your happiness and your quality of life. You guys have a blessed, beautiful, wonderful rest of your day, your week, your month, all those things. And I will see you on the next time. Do I have an ending thing? Do I have a... Can I just dance, maybe? Just... Can I do... Just do... Maybe... Just a little... I'm not a very good... Snapper, maybe... Maybe I'll just turn the music up on this part while I edit and we'll just... Love y'all.